Right here, Ace King. Late again, so another steal scenario. We pop it to three and get cold called. And here we whiff. Okay, another example of missing the flop. Two suited, 60% all flops. If you guys uh, have been keeping up, that's of course what you've been seeing. And that's how it's always going to be in the long run. So this is a two suited, low, highly connected board, uh, which we missed. We've got the running nut, uh, nut flush draw, but uh, not much more. Okay, 2 5 would give us a straight, but actually we'd be playing the board at that point because the 6 is on. So, you know, we've got two over cards, running flush, not much, so basically a complete whiff, which is going to happen 66% of the time when you're holding ace king or ace queen. And he then bets, and we just call in position. So this is a good spot where he's going to have missed that flop as much as we have. Now, you know, pair of fives is licking his chops. But if he was on a flush draw, right, and checks to us is a perfect time for us to float, namely why we called in position to his donk bet. And here he bets it out again, but again, you see this is like a weaker... You know, smaller kind of bet. So this can be flop sets. It can be the five, trying to build that pot. Who knows? Um, but this again is um, yeah, super, super small, and it's given us already odds of uh, 3.75 to 1. So we then raise him up, and he lets it go. In position, I'll play in your opponent. All right, five, seven suited. Again, I believe a steel, a steel scenario. Yep, we raise it up. You know, 100 again, two, three and a half from the cutoff, and we get cold called. And here we flop a flush draw. So uh, 750 in the pot. Yeah, exactly 7.5 big blinds since we're playing you know 100, and this guy donks into us. Okay, so it's a donk bet. It doesn't allow us to make our standard continuation bet. And you know we don't we don't have the odds to make that call uh, flat. But we are in position and we can get creative, and we do have relatively decent draw. So, again, another situation where we can opt for a float. All right, and uh, here, you know, without the spade, you can you can also bet anytime he checks. You can raise anytime he bets. Uh, again, in position, everything's open to you. You can represent that ace. You can represent the flop sets, whatever you like. And it's the idea of just calling it flat in position and seeing what he does on the turn. So he checks his time, and you know if I am running a, a float bluff here, I'm going to bet exactly like I do now with the completed flush, and I bet then two thirds of that pot and take it down, and that's exactly what I'll be doing, um, even with yeah, king queen here of clubs. So play in position as often as you can, especially with your speculation. You can you can do that a lot, guys. Just you know, call in any flop bet in position, see what they do on the turn. That's that's very often a strong play against most opponents. Another steal situation here: suited ace queen on the cutoff, folded around to us, I believe, and we raise it up to three and a half big blinds. No fifty here. We get a cold collar from the ten jack suited on the button. Uh, Decent play. I mean, definitely we're both uh, deep stacked here, big stack. Uh, Ten jack suited on the button in position. Definitely a hand you can cold call with, uh, especially against a, a stealer. We make a standard C bet here, and this is a, um, a semi bluff. So, as always, you know the positional C bet move. I was a pre-flop aggressor. Make I continue my aggression, so to say, into the flop with this bet of uh, just under pot size. You know, I've got 52%. If we're to get it all in right now. Jack-10 uh, suited, but not connected with the board. Just calls. And that's a decent move. It's a really decent move if you do put me on this kind of hand. Right? Flush draw, um, over card kind of deals. Um, right, so he just calls that flat. And the turn is a blank. You know, it's not likely that I'm on a three. And I decide for a check and he bets it out. So I was hoping here with this check, my idea was hopefully he'll just check behind and I get again two cards for the price of one. I could have opted for a second barrel here um, but if if I 
bet that second barrel out and he comes over the top. I've really got a fold a lot of hands here. So um, I check and I've still got a lot of equity in my hand. So let's look at it. I've got you know, nine, nine outs for the flush. And if I think my ace and my queen are good, if I do put him on this kind of hand, um, then, yeah, I'm looking at, again, about 15 outs, say. And that is more or less 30%. And when he bets pot here, that's exactly what I'm getting. All right, so he makes a pot size bet, which is always giving your opponent 2 to 1 pot odds, i.e. 33% break-even equity needed to make that call. And as you see here, I've got 32%, so I'm giving up a percent here. But that's a call I can make because I've also got uh, another basically twice his bet here after the fact. And in our game here, that's actually 50 big blinds. So, so there's, you know, with this call, there's a lot, um, there's a lot of money that I can make up after the fact. And I'm actually almost getting a one-to-one -one pot odds to completion odds call here. So this looks a little bit funky maybe to some people to make this call, but actually it's mathematically perfect. And like I said, with the opportunity to maybe pick up some of the remaining 50 big blinds here, you can make this kind of call also out of position. Hypotheticals again, and we opt for the check call, giving us the pot odds to do so. All right, now, queen hits. And this is pretty much a perfect card. Action's going to die if the heart hits, but he's not necessarily going to put me on a queen. And that's a good, good thing. It increases the likelihood of me getting paid off. Uh, ace hits, action's going to die a lot too, because he's going to put me much more likely on an ace, or any kind of hard draw, or any kind of, um, yeah, what to say, uh, yeah, maybe on a straight draw, uh, etc. But this queen, you know, he's not going to necessarily give it to me. The fact that the flush missed, um, my, I mean, my play looked like a flush draw. This all increases the opportunity of getting paid off. So we then check one more time, okay, representing the missed flush draw. So what I'm doing with this check is, this check call the turn, check the river, is inducing a bluff from him. And in this case, I mean, it's not necessarily a bluff as such, because he did have top pair until just now. But he'll be, with my check here on the turn, check call the turn, check the river, he'll be, he'll be bluffing a lot more. And that's the idea of this, this line. So... Uh, he checks, unfortunately, behind, and yeah, we take it down. So, good move on his part, good check. I was hoping to suck him in. Uh, he didn't fall for it. And so, you can also opt for just betting that out. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you choose. You know, this is one of those situations where you can go either way. And that's how it went down. Okay, so this time, fours are good enough, threes are also good enough. As an open steel raise from the cutoff with deep stacks. We get one cold collar on the button, another cold collar from the small blind and with hard. So, how do they play it? Check from the small blind, we also check, we don't make our c-bet. And, ironically enough, um, surprisingly enough, the button here should be betting, I mean, pretty much 70-80% all that, um, representing the ace. And he just checks, so I'm thinking, okay, fantastic you guys don't want the small pot, then I'll be more than likely and very happy to take a shot at it. <laughs> so I bet out half pot, you know, small blind checks again, king hits, uh, half pot, I only have to take it down 33% of the time, and that's exactly what happens. Bring our pair of threes all the way down and take down a little pot. Playing in position and making moves when it looks like other players on weekends. That's why, I mean, again, um, don't necessarily play your cards, play your position and your players. Right? That guy, if, if that button had bet, and had bet anything, he would have taken it down right there on the flop.